Today I'm going to be sharing my Sony a7S 3 vlog setup and I'm also going to be telling you the best lenses that you should get to vlog with the Sony a7S 3 You got to just press record. Hey guys, my name is Noel Molt. Now, before we even get into this, this camera is expensive. Now, it's really really good and I actually think it's the best vlog camera that you can get. And now that comes with a hefty price tag. So this is not for everybody. I know on this channel we talk a lot about the M50, maybe the A6400, the ZV-1. Those are great cameras and if you're using those for your YouTube channel, that's great. Stick with it. But if you really want to get the best of the best, this camera is it. This thing is not going to be outdated for a long time. I really think this is a phenomenal camera and I think if you want to get that best of the best and you have the money to go for it, this is a great option. And so I'm definitely going to be using the a7S III for all of my content on Think Media this year as well as on my personal channel. I'm gonna do some vlogging with it and my wife and I have shot some content on it. And it's just such a great camera. You get such a nice image right out of it. So I'm excited to break down my vlog setup for you guys. Now when it comes to vlogging, I like to keep it lightweight. I like to keep it simple. I don't want a huge camera. I don't want a huge setup. So the a7S III is nice because it's pretty light. You got the stabilization. You have amazing autofocus. You have the flip out screen, which I love. And so everything about this camera, I really feel like it is just, uh, it just fits exactly what I need it for, uh, for all YouTube content creation, vlogs, as well as other content creation. Like it is just phenomenal. That being said, to keep things nice and lightweight, I like to use the Pixie Mini Tripod by Manfrotto. This thing is a beast. Now I've had this thing for years and I've talked about it on this channel before, but the reason why I like using this over the Gorillapod, number one is this thing is sturdy. This thing is not going to fall on you. The Gorillapod for me, the legs start to get tired over time and the camera can actually fall over. And when you have a Sony a7S III on top of your Gorillapod, you don't wanna be thinking about if it's gonna fall over. This ball head is incredibly strong. So I've loved using this and it's so small too. So you can throw it in a pocket, you can throw it in your backpack and it's very lightweight and it's just perfect for holding up, doing your vlogging content on this. So I've kind of found this to be that perfect, minimal vlogging handle to use for your day-to-day -day use. Now, when it comes to a microphone, you might already have a microphone, but if you don't, the one that I use, the one that I recommend, I think it just sounds so nice, straight out of camera, is the Rode VideoMic NTG. Now, that's actually plugged into my Sony A7S III right now, so that's what you're listening to, and I just think it sounds great. It just sounds really good to me, and so, I love this mic. I think it's the best YouTube mic that you can get. And so if you are looking for that best uh, quality, I definitely recommend going with one of these. You aren't going to regret it. Now, when it comes to actually recording the footage, your regular SD cards are going to work on this camera. But if you do want to get something that can record in every single flavor on this camera, right? you have 4K, 120 frames per second in 10 bit, like that's incredible. And if you wanna film on that, which you never know, maybe you do get a really cool shot of something. If you do wanna have the option to record in whatever you want, I definitely recommend going with this SD card. It's by Sony, it's the Tough SD card, the CF Express Type A, and this thing reads and writes so fast. So it's very nice that it can read and write very quickly onto your computer and to transfer those files, as well as being able to record all the options on this camera. This thing has never failed me. It has never stopped working for me. And 160 gigabytes is a lot of space. So this is perfect for vlogging. If you're vlogging kind of off and on, and then you know when you want to dump that footage, again, it's gonna be very fast, but 160 gigs is a lot. And so I definitely recommend that SD card. Now, if you do wanna save a bunch of money and maybe you just wanna record 4K uh, 24 frames per second, you don't wanna go up to 120 frames per second. Uh, and definitely if you wanna record an 8-bit, then you're gonna be able to record a whole bunch on this SD card, which is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And we have had these for a long time. We've recommended them a lot at Think Media. And you're gonna be able to vlog almost in all options on that SD card and save a lot of money. And you can still record 10 bit onto that card, but I think I uh, haven't done any tests on 120 frames per second, but you are going to be able to record in a lot of the options on that SD card if you want to save a bunch of money 
for your SD card. I wanna talk about the two lenses that I recommend for vlogging that I think are the best lenses for this camera when it comes to vlogging. And then I also wanna mention my MacBook Pro M1 that I've been using to edit all this footage. I just kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit, but first like this video, then comment down below. Let me know, is the Sony a7S III a camera that you could see yourself getting in the future? Maybe even in a couple years as the price begins to drop, is this a camera that you have your eye on? Does it interest you? Let me know in the comments down below. So real quick, let's talk about editing this footage on the M1 MacBook Pro. That's what I've been using and I've been recording in 10 bit. And I'm telling you that the footage, the 10 bit 4K footage has been going flawlessly in Final Cut Pro. I've been so stoked that I've been able to capture all this data on this camera and been able to edit it without any dropped frames. Like it's really, really incredible. So if you don't have a computer that can handle 10 bit footage, you definitely wanna think about that. I recommend getting a Mac mini if you plan on just editing from home or if you wanna be able to go on the go or plug into a monitor like I have, get the MacBook Pro. And if you have that M1 chip, then you're gonna be completely set uh, editing this kind of footage. So that's always something to think about if you're looking to upgrade a camera, you wanna think about if your computer can actually handle the footage that your new camera is getting. And I'm so glad that Apple came out with these new lineup of the M1 chips inside of their computers because it's just the perfect combo. That being said, let's talk about the two lenses that I recommend. First, the one that I'm using is the 20 mil by Sony 1.8 lens. And this is a gorgeous lens. You're gonna get that blurry background, but it's also very wide angle. You can see right here, it's just an arm's length away. I can touch the camera and I'm getting a good medium shot. This is perfect for YouTube videos. Uh, if you're vlogging around the house, like this is a really, really nice lens that's gonna give you a super cinematic looking shot, but if you do want to have a little more flexibility in your shot, I definitely recommend using the Tamron 17 to 20 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now we've been vlogging on this lens and you still get that blurry background, but of course it's gonna be at 2.8 instead of 1.8. But having that little bit of zoom is really, really nice. And of course, if you're shooting in 4K, you can always crop in, but having that extra zoom has been a game changer for me vlogging just to get a little tighter on stuff when I want to. And 17 millimeters is even wider than 20 millimeters. So you definitely don't have to hold the camera out as far. Uh, but both of these lenses, I couldn't tell which one I like more. I think as far as versatility goes, if I was going out, I'm definitely bringing the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter. But if I'm just gonna be around the house and I know that I don't need to be zooming in and anything like that, I probably am gonna go with the 20 millimeter 1.8 because I just love the look of this lens. And that's why I put it on right here because I don't need to zoom. I just need to throw it on and record some quick content. But both of these lenses are very sharp, wide open. The autofocus is amazing on both of these lenses. It's completely silent. The build quality is great. Really all around, these two lenses are just phenomenal vlogging lenses for the a7S III. I would personally tell you if you're looking to buy one first to get the Tamron 17 to 28, just because it's a little more versatile, you have that zoom range. And then over time, if you did wanna get that 20 millimeter 1.8 lens, it's definitely a very sweet, very bokehlicious lens that you can get for your camera. That's it for this video, but click on the screen if you wanna watch the best mic for YouTube video, which is so important. Audio really is incredibly important when it comes to creating videos. So check that out and I'll see you guys in the next video.